You may remember that before Advent, we were doing a sermon series about what was important to Jesus. I used as inspiration the book, The Jesus Priorities, Eight Essential Habits by Christopher Markle. We talked about healing, praying, evangelizing, and several other things that Jesus spent a lot of time doing. You may have noticed, though, that I didn't say anything about love. The reason is that I just think it's too big a topic for a single sermon. So we're going to study love for the, for the next four Sundays. In the upcoming weeks, we'll look at loving our enemies, forgiveness, and living sacrificially. But today, I want to talk about how we show love by showing mercy. What is love? Singer-songwriter John Denver wrote a beautiful song about that question. He began, Perhaps love is like a resting place, a shelter from the storm. It exists to give you comfort. It is there to keep you warm. And in those times of trouble, when you are most alone, the memory of love will bring you home. Not a bad start. I think most of us would endorse that definition, even if we might expand on it. The ancient Greeks in whose language the New Testament is written, were very particular about how they defined love. They had multiple words for it. Among them was philia, which means the kind of love you have for a friend. Eros, which is romantic love. And storge, which is the love between family members. The word for love, though, in our scripture this morning that I'm going to read in a few minutes is agape. Agape isn't a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's an attitude that can only be known by the actions it leads to. Agape is an expression of God's essential nature and involves making deliberate choices. Simply put, it's sacrificial love the kind of love that puts others ahead of self. It's the love of God for humanity and the love that caused Jesus to accept the cross. It's the love we are called to when Jesus says we are to love God and love our neighbor. That can be a hard thing to do. Our American way of life is often about me first, what I am owed, and what privileges I can grasp. Agape is the opposite of that. It's about you first, what we owe God and others, and how we can create and share privilege for all. How can we do that? Markle points out that the only way it's possible is to act out of mercy first. Let's use the parable of the Good Samaritan to explore that. You remember the story. A man is robbed, beaten, and left for dead on the road. A priest and a Levite, religious leaders, pass him by without offering help. But a Samaritan came along, bound his wounds, put him on his own donkey, and took him to an inn where he paid the innkeeper to tend to the man. The Samaritan even promised to make up any additional expenses on his return trip. That's the story. I'd like to pay close attention today on what led up to and what came after the parable. This is from Luke 10, the New International Version. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And in reply, Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan. 
Here's how Jesus wrapped it up. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. The simple way to interpret this parable is to be like the Samaritan. Have mercy on people who need help. Supply their need. That seems obvious. Case closed. Not so fast. There is more going on here than our 21st century American minds might first perceive. You see, Samaritans had replaced the Jewish people in the region of Samaria when the Jews were exiled during Old Testament times. They were pagans who took over Jewish territory when the Jews were carted away by Assyria. And if that weren't bad enough, they appropriated the Jewish religion. They incorporated it into their pagan beliefs and then claimed to worship the same God. And later, they did it on one of their own mountains rather than at the temple. To say the Jews hated Samaritans is a vast understatement. So when Jesus makes a Samaritan the hero of this story, it was utterly shocking to his audience. So there is another message here than just the obvious one. The expert in the law had asked Jesus who his neighbor is. Jesus tells this story and then says, go and do likewise. In other words, go and accept the Samaritan as your neighbor. It's merciful to supply the needs of others. But in order to be truly merciful, we have to let go of hate and embrace all people as our neighbors. It might be helpful to talk about the difference between acting based on circumstances and acting based on principle. Acting on principle means you are guided in all circumstances by a higher meaning or value that is independent of those circumstances. If someone pulls out in front of you on the road and you then tailgate them out of revenge, that's acting based on circumstance. They wronged you, so you wronged them. If instead you act on the principle of loving your neighbor, which means keeping everyone safe on the road, you will hang back and give them a wide berth. The principle overrides the circumstance. I know a lot of people in our church who faithfully act on principle. Twice in recent memory, members of our congregation have helped people just released from jail by driving them to Rockford. They didn't do this because they felt like a long drive in the dark and the cold at the end of a long day. They did it because they believed in the principle of loving their neighbor. Remember, agape is an attitude that leads to an action. It's sacrificial love that puts others first. That's not an endorsement of being a doormat or of doing something dangerous, but it is a call to prayerfully ponder where you need to practice mercy. Also remember, Jesus died for bank robbers and atheists. He died for Judas, who betrayed him, and Peter, who denied him. He died for you, no matter where you have strayed, in an extreme act of mercy. He died because he followed the principle of agape. The words about loving God and neighbor that Jesus led to life weren't something the expert in the law said spontaneously. He was quoting scripture. Here are the original words from Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, 
is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Jesus never directly referred to the rest of these verses, but his listeners would have known them and so applied them. They tell us that we are to so live that love, agape, is displayed in everything we do, everything about our lives. Markle says, when we let love for others consume us, we come nearest to God. When we let love for others consume us, we come nearest to God. Our calling is clear. We are to go forth and be near to God, spiritually, but also in our attitude and behavior. Show mercy to all, all the time. Let that be your guiding principle. And love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Let us pray. God of agape, you have shown your sacrificial love for us by giving your only son to be our savior, to submit himself to suffering and death on a cross for our sake. Give us your spirit of such love that we would show mercy in all things, that we would love all our neighbors, that we would everywhere be known as your children. This we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. People of God, go forth and live in the light of Christ, sharing his love with all you meet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.